Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I will be talking about Power BI and this video should be all that you need if you are learning Power BI for work or you're preparing for an interview. Now, I used to work as a reporting analyst and Power BI used to be my bread and butter. And it is a very important business intelligence tool in today's market. In this video, I'll walk you through how to go from a raw Excel file to a clean merged data set and build a simple Power BI dashboard step by step. And like my last Excel video, I will be focusing on why you would do something and the logic behind things and how they actually matter in work and interview situations. So let's switch to my laptop. Okay, so when we click into Power BI, this is what we'll see and I'll go ahead and select a blank report. Our first step is obviously going to import the data for which we go into get data and select Excel workbook. You'll see that you have a bunch of different options for that. But for this video, we will be going from a raw Excel file to a dashboard. So once I select my data set, it will give me the options to select which tables I want to import. Our Excel data set has two tabs, sales data and sales rep info. Both have been imported as tables. So I will click on both options. And then the next step is important. Instead of clicking on load, I will click on transform data. And the reason you want to do that is there are two pages in Power BI, the Power BI desktop page, which you just saw, and the Power Query, the Power Query editor, where we will be cleaning up our data. So we always want to load our data set into Power Query editor as opposed to the Power BI desktop page because Power BI desktop page is more for the visualization piece than it is for the data cleaning piece. So I'll click on transform data and you want to do this with whatever data source you have. Always click on transform data instead of load. Applied steps basically shows all the steps that Power BI has done to get to this stage and everything that you will be doing next will also be recorded into applied steps, which is amazing because any changes you make, you'll see what's happening. So if you want to remove any or you think you've made a mistake and you want to go into the different steps to see where that mistake has happened, you can go into applied steps one by one. So now we have both our data sets loaded into Power Query Editor. The next step would be to look at our data types. So here after promoting the headers basically just means that it brings the headers to the headers section. It changed the type and now this doesn't always happen. And even if it does, you don't want to rely on Power BI making the data type changes. You want to go into your data set and make sure that the data type is exactly what you expect it to be. For example, I will go in and change the date from date time to date because I don't really care about the 12 a.m. I only want the date. So I'll replace this with, with current and I'll go through my data just ensuring that all the data types are correct. Here I want this to be a currency, so a fixed decimal number and this I will also change to currency. Now there are two main reasons why you want to ensure that your data types are correct. The first reason is your data will not act the way it's supposed to if the data type is incorrect. So for example, if total sales was recognized as a text, you would never be able to add up the different sales that we have made because it's not a number and text cannot be added up. So that would be a big issue. If our date column was recognized as text, Power BI would not break it down into year, month, day, quarter, like we'll see in the next step. And so that is one of the reasons it's important. The second reason is Power BI will create relationships between the different data sets. And so we don't have to do manual lookups like we did in Excel. And for that, the data type on the unique identifier has to be the same in all your data sets, whatever you are connecting. And so in our case, the sales rep ID is our unique identifier. So the sales rep ID in sales data is recognized as a text. And we want to ensure that the sales rep ID in our sales rep info table is also recognized as a text. Now, because we know that the data types is the same, we can confidently create that relationship between the two tables and we'll know that the tables will talk to each other. This video is more about creating a simple dashboard rather than the data analysis piece. And so I'm not really going into cleaning and I have a clean data set here, but something that you might do always is change the column name. So I'll quickly demonstrate that. If for example, I wanted to change the name of my total sales column, I can double click and just change the name. When I hit enter, you'll see that the name changed, but also I saw that come in in the applied steps and I know that this step, I renamed the columns. And so if I change my mind or if I made a mistake, I can just go in and cross this out and it'll go back to the original. So now this is done. I want to load this data into our Power BI desktop. So I'll go at the top left and hit close and apply. 
It's creating the connection in the model. And now we'll see that our, our data has been loaded into the Power BI desktop page. On the data pane, we can see that both our tables, the sales data and sales rep info have been loaded into Power BI desktop. Visualizations is where we will select our charts and format those charts. Our centerpiece is the canvas where we will be building our dashboard. And on the left, we have three different sections. The first is the report view, where we are right now, which is our canvas. The second is the table view. And this is where we can see our data that we have imported in from Power Query Editor. Now, even though majority of our data cleaning is going to be in Power Query Editor because it has a lot more options, you still want to sometimes make changes in Power BI Desktop using DAX, which is just the coding language that is used in Power BI Desktop. In Power Query Editor, it's called M. So in the Power BI Desktop, you might add columns, you will create new measures, you will use existing measures that they have. So you will still have to do a lot of data changes in Power BI Desktop. So it's important to know where that data lies. The third view is our model view. And this is where the relationships are created between the different tables. So as you can see here, that Power BI has already created a relationship between our two data sets using sales rep ID. If I hover over the line here, I'll see that sales rep ID has been connected. And so we don't have to do the manual lookup that we did in Excel. These tables are already going to talk to each other and everything is brought together on the back end so that we can do our data analysis. Now, sometimes if you have a lot of different IDs and if you have a lot of different tables, Power BI might not create that relationship itself. And also it might use the incorrect identifier. So many times you would have to create the relationship yourself. I'm going to delete this so I can show you how that's done. To create a relationship, you would simply drag and drop your identifier from one table to the next. And you'll drop it on top of sales rep ID here. And you'll see that it's creating a new relationship and it's confirming that you want to make this relationship active, which you do. And so now we have this relationship between sales rep info and sales data using sales rep ID. And now that we have a relationship created, we can go back into the report view and start creating a report. All right, so this is where the fun happens and we will start answering questions about our data. So the first thing I'm interested in is the total sales that we made by product. For that, I can select the column chart product if I click on product, it goes in the X axis and in the Y axis, I want revenue. So here we can see our total revenue by product. The next question I want to answer is our monthly revenue. Now, before selecting another chart, you want to make sure that you click out of your existing chart because otherwise it will just replace the existing chart with the new chart that you have selected. So I will click out of my first chart and then click on the line chart. And here we can see that because our data type was a date, there is a calendar icon right next to date and there's also a drop down. So Power BI has automatically divided the date in year, quarter, month and day because that is the information that we had in Power Query Editor, which is amazing, right? So I will select month, which goes in the X axis and then revenue will go in the Y axis. So now I have the total sales by month. We can see that there was a major drop in February. Now this is chat GBT data, but you will see trends like this in your data sets. And this is how you get an understanding of what's happening. So there could be a number of reasons. Maybe we had more staff in January or we had sales. So there was more revenue that we generated in January and then there was a big dip in February. So just by looking at the data set, there are a lot of questions that start building up in our head. One question could be, which countries did we make the most sales in? So we can bring in our country information. You can use a map chart for that, but for some reason it's not really working on my end because this is just a simple dashboard. I'm not going to bother too much about it. So I'll just select another column chart and country can go in the X axis just by clicking on it and revenue can go in the Y axis. So now we have country information as well. But another question could be who is making the most sales? So basically our sales rep performance data. Now this is where you'll see how the tables are talking to each other. If I select the name of the sales rep from the sales rep info page because you don't really know people by ID, right? So I selected the name from our second table, but I will select the revenue from our first table. And you'll see that the data has talked to each other and we have this table even though we brought fields from two different tables. Now, if I go back to the model view and I remove this relationship, you'll see that we no longer have that information and we can only see $184,000 of revenue, which is, which is our total for all the reps. 
And so this is why it's important to create a relationship between the two tables so that we can see the information the way we want to see it. Now, one of the powers of Power BI is that it creates interactive dashboards and you can build that interaction through two ways. One is simply by filtering in your existing charts. So if I was interested in United States information, I would click on United States on the bar chart and you can see that it filtered out the information that is connected to United States. So the monthly revenue that we had, the salespeople who made their sales in United States and what products were sold. So this is one way to filter out your data. So if you click out of uh, United States, it will filter out that data. The second way to create interactions is by slicers. Now this is the method you, that you will mostly be using and what people will use to get answers to the questions that they have and basically interact with your dashboard. All right, so I'm going to click on the slicer and I am interested in the sales rep. So you see that all the sales rep have been added to the slicer, but this is not how I like it because this is just taking up too much space. So I can go into formatting and instead of a vertical list, I'll click on the drop down option, make it smaller. And for demonstration purposes, I'll put in another slicer for country and change that here as well. So now we have country and name for our two slicers. So you'll see here that the filter is a little bit different. It's going to completely filter out the information. So if I select United States here, we can see that we now only have data for the United States. The sales rep who made those sales, the products that were sold in the United States, all of that good information. Now, if I'm interested in one particular sales rep, I can either just click on their name and get that filter with this original slicer filter already added, or I can go into my second slicer and this, then just select their name. So we'll see the products that they have sold, their sales by month, etc. Power BI is a visualization software. And so you want to make sure that your report is visually pleasing. If you are in an interview, you might not have time to make this dashboard like very beautiful, but that's not the goal. You want to focus on making sure that your data is correct and it's readable and it's giving the information that it should be giving and it's not too complicated, but you always want to look at the story that you're trying to tell. And the second is your audience. Who are you making this report for? So if you are making this report for senior executives, like C-suite executives, they always want to look at big picture. What are my total sales? What is year over year? Stuff like that. But when you create reports for individual teams, they might want to go into the nitty gritty. So then you can add a table with more raw information. Another thing you want to do is you always want to look at the colors that your company uses. So every company has a template for their Power BI dashboards and you always want to keep it consistent with what the company uses. If this is for a take home assignment, or even if this is for a live assignment, just make sure that you know the colors that the company uses and you put that colors or you add the logo there in your dashboard and it just gives you some brownie points. I'm going to show you some quick formatting that I would do in uh, a chart and you can do that for the rest of the chart. And I'm not trying to make it fancy. I'm just trying to clean up my table a little bit so that it's readable and it's just nicer to see. So if I select this table right here, I normally don't like the titles on the Y axis and the X axis because you can just in the title mention what it is. So here in the Y axis, I'm going to go in and remove the title. X axis, I'll remove the title. I'll go into the title and say total rev. Oh, Windows doesn't allow you to backspace words together. Or maybe I don't know how to do it. I use a Mac normally. Total revenue by sales rep. All right, I'll increase the data font a little bit. So you'll see in the charts, you can't always tell where one starts and the other one ends. So what I like to do is I like to add a slight shadow to my charts. So you can tell one chart by the other. And it matters more when you are clicking into the bar charts to uh, to look at those interactions and sometimes you click into one chart thinking you've clicked into another chart because you can't tell one from the other so what i will quickly do is i'll go into the format option here under general go into effects and a lot of people might not like that i do it but you know it's my choice i can do whatever i want so i go into shadow turn this on and I like a slight gray. So you can just see that slight shadow here and you'll be able to tell one chart from the other. So I like doing that. 
this is a lot cleaner now and normally i would also have different colors for my different charts and also don't make your charts too bright you don't want to create a rainbow out of this and so these are the colors that we used to use in my last job bars yes it's under visuals and i will just choose this color oh my gosh this is so dark Yes, I think this was the color that we used. So instantly this looks a little nicer. I'm going to quickly go in and do the same for all the other charts. And in the interest of time, I'm not gonna show every single step that I did, but you know how it's done now. So this entire thing took me, I think five to six minutes. It's not too long, especially once you know exactly what, what you wanna clean up. And this is really good for interviews because you don't want to worry too much about making it really nice. You can just select your formatting option for one chart and then just do the same for the rest. So now it looks much nicer and it's readable and it just, it feels like you spent a lot of time on the dashboard even though you haven't. So from a data story perspective, I also like adding key metrics, key metric cards on the top so you can get a general idea of what your product information is like. And so I will do that here. The key metric card is on the right here. You can use the card. And I'll just do revenue, like total revenue, right? So we have the total sum of revenue and I can stick that on the left. All right, so this is a lot nicer now. And the last thing you wanna do is you wanna look at it from the data story perspective. What is the story you are trying to tell to whoever is looking at this report. So you, you're giving them a general sense of what my total revenue is. They can filter it out by country and um, they can filter it out by the salesperson so they'll know how much each salesperson is making. But you look at the monthly revenue and then you look at the products. So this is my monthly revenue. These are the products that are giving me that revenue. This is my country information. So these are the countries that I'm selling the most product in. And these are my sales rep who are making the most sales. So this is kind of like a story. You're taking the viewer from left to right and you're giving them a picture in their mind of what their company is like and how their products are performing. So this is very important that you think of the audience who will be using your report and you create it accordingly. So this is how you create your first dashboard. I hope that was helpful. And if you did find it helpful, don't forget to like and also subscribe so you can come back. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your time and I'll see you next time. Bye.